Hey plant pals, today is an introduction to Cephalotus follicularis, the Australian pitcher plant. You know, there's certain plants in this nursery that just cause a lot of commotion. They're just really interesting. They're just fascinating. They just have it. Cephalotus is one of them. Cephalotus has these really unusual pitchers. They're low mounding pitchers. They have rhizomes under the soil, so they spread these clumps and make all of these pitchers. Here's a great one with some baby ones and some bigger ones. And the pitchers are so interesting. You can kind of see they're hairy. They have this very ridged peristome. They have this fur all over them, just bristly hairs all over the pitchers. They have this wide open lid that makes them look like they're just waiting, just waiting for some prey. And they have these cute little paddle shaped leaves as well that often kind of reach up in between the pitchers, sort of looking for some attention. And it's just a plant that everybody is so curious about. They want to know more about, they ask me about, they want to know how to grow, how to get. And so today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about cephalotus, how to grow it, where it grows, and give you some tips. So I have a few more different ones here to show you. Here is a little clump of baby cephalotus, which are so cute because you can see they have the tiny pitchers and it shows you that mound of pitchers. Again, that's why it's so charismatic. It almost looks like a mounded sort of brain or something to me, honestly. I love this plant. All right, so let's talk about where they grow. So cephalotus, as I said, grow in Australia. They actually only grow in Southwest Australia in this very specific kind of small area. They're very, very special. They're a unique and special plant that grow in a special location and we should all be really really protective of this species. These guys like to grow on the riverbanks of little rivers that go into the ocean and so that gives you some ideas of how to grow them well. Whenever you're looking to buy a new plant and to grow it well in your home you should really think about where it grows naturally. Do some research and that'll give you a lot of tips and tricks on how to actually grow it best in your home environment. So cephalotus really like as you can guess a sandy mix. So you can see here, this is a really good example. We use a mix of peat moss, fertilizer free peat moss and sand when we make our mix because they like to dry out a little bit between watering, which we'll get to in a second. And you need a mix that's going to allow them to dry out. So the sand really helps with that. I would recommend that you grow these guys indoors under grow lights. You're gonna be able to control the environment a heck of a lot more that way. So that's gonna be an easier way to do it. They like a lot of sun. So I would recommend growing the light under lights because that's gonna be a ton of light, which is what they want, as opposed to just putting them on a sunny windowsill. You can do a sunny windowsill, but it's gonna to have to be a lot of sun, like a ton, a ton of sun. So that's why I'd say a grow light will be easiest. You can have your grow light on a 12 hour day length and you can leave it on that 12 hour day length all year round because they don't have a dormancy. They might slow down in winter if they're exposed to the natural photo periods of the sun or they get a little colder, but they're not gonna go true dormant. So you can leave that photo period to 12 hours all year round. You're probably gonna wanna have your light six to 12 inches above the plant. It depends on the strength of your light. So now we're gonna get to the hard part with these guys, the trickiest part, the part that I'm gonna give you all my tips about, and that is watering. So unlike a lot of carnivorous plants, they wanna dry out between watering. And that's really hard because you have to find the perfect balance and there is no perfect recipe for that. I can't tell you exactly what to do because it's gonna vary depending on your natural environment and your factors. I'll give you an idea of how to start and you can try this in your house and then kind of adjust it. So what I would recommend is you set these guys in a saucer and then you water them, distilled water only. Remember, they don't want minerals or salts. Water only about a quarter to a half an inch in the saucer, and you can overhead water, they don't mind that. But a quarter to a half an inch of in the saucer, and then let that pull through the pot, and then dry out for several days, and then water again. Another trip, tip you can do is you can feel the surface of the soil. If it feels damp, don't water yet. If it feels dry, it's probably time to water. You can also do a little trick where you sort of, if it feels dry, but you're not sure, scratch the surface of the soil. You want it to be damp underneath but not totally dried out all the way underneath. And that's the real trick, right? You don't want to let them dry out so much that they dry out too much, but you don't want to sit, let them sit in water too much. So try that, try that to start. Quarter an inch of water, let it absorb through the pot and let it dry out for two to three days and then water again. Make observations as you go and see if you think your plant might need a little more water or a little bit less, depending on your factors. This also changes seasonally because even in our houses, we have seasonal factors. So in the summer, when it's hotter and drier in some areas, you probably wanna water more. When it's colder and wetter ambiently, you're gonna water less. If you have a very young plant, like this is actually a sweet little baby plant, you can go ahead and let it sit in water a little bit more. That's not gonna be so harmful. 
that's really the biggest trick for cephalotis is the watering, is letting them dry out a little bit between water. One tip I can give you too is if you notice, these little lids are always upright. If you notice the lids all closing, you dried your plant out too much. If you notice the sides of the soil pulling away from the pot really aggressively, you may have dried your plant out a little bit too much. Those are my best tips for water. You're gonna to have to try them in your own home. I'm also gonna do a little troubleshooting on some other questions I often get. So cephalotis don't have a dormancy, like I said, but if they're exposed to more cold and the shorter photo periods of winter, they often do turn a little bit redder. That's normal, don't freak out about that. And most of these plants do get a red tint to them. Some will get very red in the, a good sunlight. That's totally normal. That's kind of what you want, actually. If you notice, however, that your plants are never getting red, ever, 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 and they're kind of a lime green, they may need more light. If you notice that you have a lot of leaves, but not a lot of pitchers, they probably need more light. If you notice that they have a lot of moss growing on the top, more light and less water, but I would address those factors one at a time so your plant can adjust a little bit more slowly to it. Plants like this that are a little sensitive, you wanna acclimate slowly to any new environment. So that's why when you're making a change, pick one change and do it slowly at first. My last tip, and this is so important, fertilize. Now remember with carnivorous plants, you never wanna fertilize into the soil because that'll build up minerals and nutrients in the soil, which they don't want. What you really wanna do is mix up your fertilizer. We use Maxi, diluted one quarter teaspoon of Maxi into a gallon of water because I don't want full strength fertilizer. That's too much for these guys. I put it in my misting bottle and I mist the leaves and into the little pitchers. You can do that once a month and they'll really like that. You can also put a slow release Osmocote flower and vegetable fertilizer pellet right into a pitcher like that. That's a perfect pitcher. Just pop one in there when it opens and put a little bit of water in with it. That'll help jumpstart digestion. Don't panic if your pitcher dies back after it eats that pellet. That does happen after they eat a meal sometimes, but you're doing a good thing because you're putting a ton of nutrients back into this plant and you're gonna see an explosion of growth. All right, so those are all my tips. Remember, the Seth Lotus, while the most charismatic, is also not the easiest. So if you're a beginner to carnivorous plants or plants in general, I wouldn't recommend this to start. I would start with something a little easier and then work your way up to this. If you're ready for the challenge though, these are so fun to grow and they will just fill a pot up with these big mounded pitchers, which can get to be about two inches big, which is really big for a little cephalotis and really fun to see. All right, happy growing.